Today we're going to upgrade our RV's air conditioners by fitting each of them with a cool device called a soft start. Whether you have a larger rig with two air conditioners, trying to keep up on a sweltering day on a 30 amp hookup, or you want to use a small portable generator to keep your travel trailer cool, stay tuned and we'll explain how a soft start can improve your RVing experience this summer. We'll also show you how easy it is to install them. Our AC units typically draw about 10 to 12 amps each, so the 30 amp hookup we're currently on should be plenty of power to run both of them at the same time. As long as we're not doing any other high power draw activities like bulk charging the house batteries, microwaving dinner, or using a hair dryer. Sure enough, when we start off with house batteries on float charge and no other large items in use, we typically show only about a three or four amp draw on our energy management system. After we turn on both air conditioners, we're up to about 25 amps total, with the AC units currently drawing about 11 amps each. So why do we need to change anything if we're only using 25 of our 30 available amps? It's because air conditioners take a lot more power to start than they do to run. Let's take a look at how we got to that 25 amp draw. When we fire up the first AC unit, the fan comes on first, causing a brief spike to 9 amps, then settling back to 5. When the compressor kicks on, we get a big spike up to 33 amps before it settles back to 14. When the second air conditioner comes on, the fan spikes the total draw to 21 before settling back to 16. But when that second compressor kicks in, total draw spikes all the way up to 43 before settling back down to 25. That kind of spike happens every time the AC units cycle back on. While circuit breakers are designed to handle momentary spikes above their rated load, it's fairly common for breakers in older campgrounds to trip more easily. And if you're using a small portable generator, you probably can't even get a single AC unit to fire up at all. This is due to something called locked rotor amperage. It can take as much as five or six times as much current to get the compressor to start turning as it does to keep it turning. That's where the microwear easy start comes in. Instead of using a sudden surge of power to get the AC compressor running, it ramps up gently, eliminating that initial power spike altogether. Part of the installation includes powering up the air conditioners so that the Easy Start can learn the start characteristics for your specific compressor. So we prefer to do this where a power hookup is available. But you can use any power source that you've successfully run your AC unit on before. To get started, we'll shut off the power to the RV. Make sure our auto gen start system is disabled. And we kill the air conditioner circuit breakers for good measure. In the unlikely event that your air conditioner units are wired to run off your inverter, make sure the inverter is off before starting. We want to guarantee that the air conditioners are absolutely disconnected from all possible power sources. So let's head up on the roof and show you how we're going to install the MicroAir Easy Start 364. Then we'll tell you how you can save $25 when you buy one for your RV. Or you can check the links down below in the video description. For this job, we'll be using the following tools. Phillips and flat blade screwdrivers, a cordless drill, a wire stripper and crimping tool, electrical tape, a small hex nut driver, diagonal and needle nose pliers, some sheet metal screws, and leather gloves. We also ordered the optional installation kit from MicroAir, just to make sure we have all the miscellaneous pieces we need on hand. We have two Penguin 15,000 BTU heat pump air conditioners, which were manufactured in 2005. Installation varies depending on the year, make, and model of your air conditioner, but the basics are the same. We'll show you how our installation is done, and MicroAir has detailed instructions on their website to help with other makes and models. Removing the cover is easy, with four screws holding it in place. Then we need to locate the compressor. It's this large black cylinder with copper tubing coming out of it. We have three wires coming off our compressor, a red, a white, and a black, which will lead us to the proper connection points for the Easy Start, which has four wires. 
Following the compressor wires, we can see that they go through this strain relief into this section of the air conditioner, which is the electrical box. We remove the cover to find the ends of the compressor wires. This is where all four of the wires from the Easy Start will be connected. This is also where the run capacitor is located, which is where we'll be making most of our connections. We also have a start capacitor, which we'll no longer be needing. One important note, capacitors can hold and release current even when they're disconnected from a power source. It may not be necessary, but it's a good safety practice to short both capacitors with an insulated screwdriver to discharge any current that they might still be holding before we get started. The installation kit comes with double stick tape, but we're mounting our Easy Start vertically, so we'll be adding a couple of sheet metal screws so it won't come loose over time from vibration. We locate a spot where we won't be screwing into any important components. We know this location's okay because we can see that there's nothing on the other side. We'll clean the surfaces with the alcohol swabs from the installation kit to improve adhesion. Stick the unit in place with the tape. And then add our two screws. We route the four wire bundle from the Easy Start along the wires that come from the compressor and secure them in place with the cable ties that came in the installation kit. The kit also included a new strain relief to replace this one, which isn't large enough to accommodate the new wires, so we'll remove it. We install the new split strain relief around all of the wires and snap it into place. Now we can begin making our electrical connections. Following the white wire from the compressor into the electrical box, it connects to the top of the run capacitor. Disconnect that white wire and cut the connector off the end. Make note of the terminal you remove the wire from because you'll be using it in the next step. Strip about a half inch of insulation from both the white compressor wire and the brown wire from the Easy Start. Twist them together and use an end splice to secure them. Don't use a wire nut for this since crimped on connectors are much more vibration resistant. Pull on each wire to make sure that they're secure. As an added precaution, we add a few turns of electrical tape around the connector and wires. Next, we'll crimp a female spade connector onto the end of the white wire coming from the Easy Start. We're using a yellow connector because the wires are 12 gauge. Again, a quick pull and some electrical tape will confirm that the wire is secure and well insulated. Then, connected to the run capacitor using the terminal that we just removed the white compressor wire from. Next, we'll follow the compressor's red wire to the run capacitor and make note of where it's connected. That's the red terminal group. Then, we'll crimp another yellow female spade connector onto the orange wire from the Easy Start and attach it to an empty lug on the red terminal group. Now we'll follow the black wire from the compressor, which on newer models might be a blue wire instead. In our air conditioner, it connects to a relay on the control board. We'll disconnect that wire from the relay and cut the connector off the end. Now we'll plug the short black wire that came in the installation kit into that same terminal on the relay. Strip about a half inch of insulation from the short wire, the black or blue compressor wire, and the black wire from the Easy Start. Twist the ends of these three wires together and crimp them into an end splice connector.
Since our AC units are equipped with a start capacitor, the last step in here is to disconnect it. We follow the white wire from the start capacitor over to the run capacitor, remove both ends, and discard the wire. We then follow the red wire from the start capacitor and see that it ends at a connector on the run capacitor's red terminal group. Remove both ends of that red wire and discard it. You can see that along the length of that wire, we have a small device called a PTCR, which is part of the start capacitor system and can also be discarded. You can remove the start capacitor if you want to. We're just going to leave ours because the strap that holds it in place is a little hard to unscrew. And since it also holds the run capacitor in place, it's easier to just leave it there rather than resizing the strap. With all the connections made, we can close up our electrical box. Now that our soft start is fully installed, the last step is the learning process, which is done by running the air conditioner five times. This is how the Easy Start learns the startup characteristics of your particular compressor. We turn the power back on at the pedestal and the breaker box. Set the thermostat low enough to trigger the AC to come on. The fan comes on first, followed a few seconds later by the compressor. Listen for the compressor to come on and then let it run for 30 seconds, then turn the air conditioner off. As soon as it shuts off, you can turn it back on again. Like most air conditioners, ours has a built-in two and a half minute delay before it starts. The Easy Start has a slightly different delay, which prevents the compressor from engaging until five minutes has passed since it last ran. That's not normally noticeable at all, except when we're repeatedly cycling like we are now during the initial setup. So, two and a half minutes in, the AC system turns the fan on. But since it just ran, the Easy Start waits an additional two and a half minutes before firing up the compressor. So don't start your 30 second count when you hear the fan come on. When you hear the compressor come on, allow it to run for 30 seconds again, and then shut the AC off. We'll repeat the exact same process three more times, allowing the compressor to run for 30 seconds at a time for a total of five times. So the total time it takes to complete the initial learning process is about 30 minutes. After that, the Easy Start is fully trained to your air conditioner so you can simply use your system normally. Complete the job by reinstalling the cover. If you only have one AC unit, you're all done. Since we have two, we'll repeat the exact same process on our other air conditioner, installing our second Easy Start the exact same way we did the first one. The results of this upgrade are obvious. Instead of starting with a sudden jolt, our air conditioner now comes on smoothly and quietly, gently ramping up to speed instead of the huge spike we used to have. They take the same power to run as before, but without the risk of tripping the circuit breaker during startup. Now running two air conditioners on a 30 amp connection is a breeze. And if you have a small portable generator, you won't have to worry about a startup spike preventing you from using the AC while you're boondocking in your towable. We like the way our soft starts work so much that we've arranged with MicroAir to offer a $25 discount to RV Geeks viewers. Use the discount code RVGEEKS at checkout when you buy an Easy Start 364 factory direct at microair.net. And if you have two or three air conditioners, you can save 50 or $75 because the discount code will save you $25 on each unit you purchase. We hope this tip helps you keep your cool this summer. As always, safe travels and thanks for watching.